Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at electrical systems on an aircraft. Now we've talked about a bunch of different electrical systems, but this time we're actually going to go through the full works, kind of explain what all the units and what everything really is, so you have a pretty good understanding of how it changes based on the different type of aircraft. So to get us started, uh, we're actually going to have to go hit up some slides. So the first few things you're going to need to know, and like I said, I'll only be very brief here, is that when you have electrical terms, these are the ones you're going to hear a lot. Uh, the first one's going to be called voltage. This is your electrical pressure. Amperage is going to be your electrical current. Uh, this is your flow. And then power is simply when you take the two together and you make it do something, whether it's a luminous light bulb or defrost your propeller. The easiest way to keep these two things together, or keep them apart, I should say, is to always think about them in terms of a dam. Uh, when you have a really, really, really tall dam, this is my water behind the dam, um, if you were to take a little hole and drill a hole in the bottom down here, um, you'd have a bunch of water that comes splurting out. Now, depending on how much water you have backed up here, it's actually the height of this would determine, determines how hard that water is going to try to push itself out. That pressure of water is the equivalent of your voltage. The next one you're going to see, of course, is that hole is going to have different sizes. If it's a pretty big hole, a lot of that water at that pressure is going to come gooshing out. Now, the amount of water that comes gooshing out at the same time is the equivalent of your amperage. And then finally, if I were to put somebody standing right here, for example, while putting their face in that little hole, um, the bigger the hole, the more work that's going to get done that's going to blast that person um, pretty much downstream there. And that's going to be my power. If you always think about those three items in terms of that, you're going to have a pretty successful time. Uh, the other thing we're going to go ahead and take a look at, of course, is the difference between alternating current and direct current. In alternating current, believe it or not, all the electrical current goes in one way, and then it goes the other way. Then it goes that way, then it goes that way. It actually alternates um, sometimes between 50 or 60 times per second. So you still get work done, but you don't have a continuous flow. The other kind of current you're going to see is what they call a direct current. Uh, this is when you take all of your electrical and you're going to make it flow in the same direction, just like we have in our little dam here. Now, on an aircraft, there's a lot of different sources of power, and they're all going to make, um, be a little different depending on the type of aircraft, the application, and the age of the airplane. Let's go back to that Boeing for a second. Now, in this aircraft, there's actually two sources of power. We have the battery, which you're going to see in pretty much all aircraft, thankfully. Oh, there's some aircraft that actually don't have batteries. And the other thing we do is we have what they call generators. Now, generators are these big, big, big things attached to our little engine in here that actually generates electrical current based on how fast the engine is actually turning. So if I would actually uh, come floating down here, uh, you'll notice that we have this handy dandy gauge here, this little ammeter. And you'll notice that it has a negative portion. You'll also notice that it has a positive portion. Now, one of the things I can do, of course, is this tells me how fast I'm discharging the battery. So right now, you'll notice that I'm discharging about minus six or minus seven amps. That's the current flowing out of the battery. If I were to keep the situation exactly as is, I would basically run my battery completely empty. Now, depending on the type of aircraft you're operating, it could be pretty complicated. It could be an issue. So one of the things I can do, of course, is I can reduce my electrical load by shutting off various items on board. You'll notice by uh, killing a couple of those lights and things like that, if I take my engine instruments off, I've actually reduced my electrical load significantly. I'm down to about minus four amps, which uh, most batteries are usually between 40 and 50 amp hours, which means if you take, let's say, 50 divided by five, that's going to be about 10. That's uh, 10 out of, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty short. I get about 11 or 12 minutes before my battery is completely dis discharged. But the interesting thing about generators and the reason that they're not used anymore is the fact that their power production is completely dependent on how fast it's turning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and push my throttle forward right here, and you can see the engine power coming up a little bit. And you're going to notice that all of a sudden, my aircraft is now producing positive. I'm actually charging the battery on board. Now, if I come in here and uh, start slapping some buttons in here and I'm uh, trying to increase the little electrical load, you'll see that once that electrical load really starts to kick in, it uh, definitely has an impact on our ability to keep up with the charging of the battery, which is why with a lot of these old aircraft, you basically not run anything until you're ready to go kind of a thing like that. And you can see we're sitting here uh, picking up a lot of temperature just being parked on the ground running those generators. Now, the interesting thing about generators is they produce a direct current, which is the same type of current that your battery is producing. So the two are essentially interchangeably electrically on board of the aircraft itself. 
now this is a little bit of an awkward situation. If this were nighttime, I could run my battery all the way to zero, which could be a very, very big problem for us, depending on what's going on. You know, if I need to come in for a landing, for example, I'll go ahead and pull my throttle back, you know, coming in, setting myself up, just coming over the runway, and then all my lights go out. And uh, you can definitely imagine the electrical complications that you would experience with that. It's also worth noting that some of these older aircraft actually only had a single generator. You wouldn't actually produce generators on both sides. Generators are relatively simple to use, and that's one of the reasons why you'll still see them in some airplanes, you know, big turboprops and stuff like that. And in some cases, what they would actually do is just run one engine and run the generator while leaving the other engines off just so they had the ability to kind of keep some electrical flow going around inside of the aircraft. Now, as you know, they didn't stick with this design. One of the big evolutions, and again, one of the downsides of the generator was the fact that not only does it only produce direct current, but it's also relatively heavy. Uh, we have these things instead called alternators, which are the idea of an alternator is to actually produce alternating current, which as you probably realize, uh, we can't use that directly. We actually have to convert it into direct current to run certain parts of the aircraft. Now we have a Cessna 172S here, which is a great example of how all this comes together. And now looking down here, we have ourselves our electrical bus. So what, if you're wondering what all these little guys are, they're just circuit breakers. And the interesting thing is you can actually pop one of these circuit breakers out in the real world and it would disable that part of the aircraft. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna engage the battery switch. Now a couple different things are gonna come on when you do the battery. I'll actually hit the avionics switches as well. We're gonna see a couple indications of what our aircraft is up to. Uh, one thing I would like to do is reduce my electrical load a little bit. I don't know why the guy before me decided to eject the uh, brightness of everything up here. You're gonna absolutely kill this plane's battery before I get a chance to show what I'm doing here. You'll notice we have a couple new measurements. Uh, we have one that indicates our voltage. In this case, we're at a 25 volt system here, which means we're very, very charged. Uh, most of these aircraft actually will use dual batteries for the purposes, again, you take two batteries, add them together, you can get yourself a higher voltage available. And the other thing you're gonna observe if you flip your head down here is that we're pulling 30 amps right now, which, <laughs> I'm sorry, not 30 amps, we're pulling, let's see here, this would be 60 amps, that would be 30. We're pulling about 10 amps, 10, 15 amps, which is actually quite a bit of electricity here, even though we're just sitting on the ground. If you're wondering who our, uh, winner is here it's going to be our gps as a matter of fact if we were to come over here and do one of these real fast you can see that just on its own we're only pulling about five or six amps which isn't that bad at all but you notice i have no indication anymore of what my actual voltage is so what we're going to do is that we're going to go ahead and uh, start up the aircraft here and we're going to keep it uh, nice and simple we're going to go do nothing fancy we're not going to do all those like fancy procedures we're just here to kind of get this thing rumble in here so i'm going to go ahead and give it just a little bit of power to hold us at about 1000 rpm here that looks pretty good right there. I hate it, by the way. Microsoft Flight Sim will randomly erase your hours, so be mindful of things like that. So anyway, we've got the thing started up. Uh, we've got a little bit of RPM. Uh, we're just running off the battery. Notice we're still pulling amperage here. Now, of course, if I were to come over here and flip on the avionics master, um, everything goes on. But you'll observe we're still at 25 volts, which means all the electrical power on this aircraft is actually still coming out of our little direct current battery. Now, watch what happens when I turn on the alternator you'll notice a bunch of things happen. Now, the first things happen that our system voltage now jumps up to 28 volts because our alternator runs at a higher voltage than a battery does. The second thing you probably observed is our amperage down here. Uh, we're now actually charging the battery. And the interesting thing that actually will happen is as we fly, this our amperage will slowly decrease as we continue uh, charging the battery to the point when it's completely charged. Now you're sitting there going, wait, didn't you mention a minute ago that alternating current, the electricity goes like this and direct current, it all goes in one direction. How do you get alternating current to be direct current? Well, they have these devices called rectifiers. And what they do is they take that funky wave and they only allow it to come out in one direction so we can actually recharge our battery. Now, one of the cool systems things about these buses is that we can actually take the battery out of the system completely. And now notice, the aircraft is perfectly happy right now. The engine's running, all my electronics are on, I can read all my gauges. Notice our system voltage is still at 28 volt, even though the battery isn't even electrically connected to anything else on board of this aircraft. Now, right now, the alternator is doing all the work. Now, one of the interesting things is that you probably aren't gonna see here, but if I were to pull the throttle way, way, way back, what would actually start to happen is the um, aircraft would start going, Whoa. like your lights would start flickering a little bit, and maybe these displays would start cutting in and out because the alternator at such a low RPM is not able to provide enough electrical power to keep all of this good stuff basically going on. So it's actually kind of interesting that uh, we don't get that effect, but keep in mind if we are on a generator, a long time ago, the generator would have popped right off the line and all these things would go dark instantaneously, basically the equivalent of that once we hit that point. Now you're probably sitting here going, all right, okay, so far so good, so far so good. So you've engaged the battery, you've engaged the alternator, the battery is now being charged off the alternator and you're still pulling electrical power out of it. Exactly. 
Now, the interesting thing here is um, in little aircraft like this, it's relatively straightforward. You have your source, you have all the consumers, everything is happy, we have our two instrumentations. But where things start to get a little more complicated is when you move into aircraft that have multiple engines. As a matter of fact, things can get a lot more electrically complicated. So we have a Boeing 737, the PMDG 700. And this aircraft has got some electrical needs. Uh, we've got a couple problems. Uh, one problem, of course, is everybody on board here around wants to plug the devices in. Uh, you've got the engine itself, and somebody forgot to set the parking brake, I can see. And the other thing, of course, is we have all the avionics up here. And uh, to make things really, really interesting for us is you actually have a ton of different types of avionics here. <laughs> okay, I'll hold the brake, whatever. So um, the interesting thing that we have here is we have all these electrical things, we've got computer systems on board. There's so many different electrical components on this particular aircraft that need electrical in it. So one of the things we have here is if I actually come over here, down to our little systems display here, is you get this nice little breakdown. It can come to engine. You can see all these different components here and everything, the way that it breaks itself down. But on an aircraft this large, you have a new problem. And that's the fact that you have basically alternators on both engines, but those two alternators could potentially be working at a different frequency with against each other. If you want to think about it this way, if this one right now is on the up wave and this one here is on the down wave, if you were to try to put those two waves together, you get one straight wave, which would not be something that's desirable. As a matter of fact, the two engines would basically kick each other off. So you have an interesting problem on aircraft like this that the systems have to be synchronized in order for them to be able to safely go ahead and power. So the solution that many, many designers did, and if we actually stick our head up here, is what they actually opted to do is they opted to go ahead and design the systems so that they're independent of each other. So while right now, for example, you can see all my lights and stuff like that, uh, we actually have one power in one part of the aircraft and the other alternator system generators are powering the other side of the aircraft. So if I actually come up here and I were to pop off uh, the right generator, for example, you'll notice you hear click, and uh, everything pops itself off all simultaneously. And the reason nothing bad happened to us there is because if you noticed, our left generator now automatically kicked in and started providing power for the other side of the aircraft. So let's go ahead and pop that back onto the bus here and go snap. Everything goes click. And now, of course, the two systems are now split with each other. Now, you'll notice if I open up this little switch here, this calls called this bus transfer. This is basically allowing us to link the two systems to each other. Notice there's no on position here. It's either auto, meaning if something bad happened, push the button, or it's got off saying, please don't do that. Now, if I switch this to the off position and I go ahead and disengage my generator here, I lose half of my aircraft because there's nothing powering that side of the airplane. Now, if I actually were to come over here and close this sucker, you'll notice that now this side of the aircraft, this particular generator, is now feeding this one as well. Let's go ahead and engage that again so we can go ahead and do it. I feel so far, sorry for the electronics on this airplane. We're being very abusive here. Now, where it gets kind of interesting on aircraft like this is if you actually were to float up and many aircraft of this style have a similar display, you'll notice there's actually two different switches here. We have an AC system and a DC system. They're actually separate from each other. And one of the things we can do here is we can actually pop over to the bat and you can see right now that uh, we're basically not pulling anything out of the battery. If I go to the battery bus, you can see we're at 28. Hey, there's that 28 again. You see them pulling nothing out of there. And of course we have our TRs, which is kind of our different places where we're going to be sending electrical power to. And you can see how much amperage we're actually sucking out of it. Now on the right hand side, you notice we have a completely different set here. We have a ground power, which should be basically nothing. We have our first generator, which is producing, uh, let's see here, 115. Notice it has a frequency of 400. Now the APU, nothing. Generator two over here, you can see is up producing about 48. You can see this one's up pulling 49. So this one's working really, really hard to power this. Our inverter, by the way, if you're curious what an inverter is, this is basically a way you can take DC power and you can convert it into AC. That's all inverters are. And right now the inverter is not pulling anything. And the reason being is the fact that we're not pulling off of this. Now where this gets very, very interesting is I'm actually gonna leave this up here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna pop the generator off one side real quick, which immediately you're gonna get a bunch of angry alarms. Notice how everything went and I switched over there. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna pop the other generator off. So now you'll notice that our battery, our auxiliary battery actually kicked in and you notice all my electrical pumps and everything failed simultaneously. We're now powering this aircraft off of our particular piece and you can actually see our inverter here is working really, really, really hard. Um, basically lost voltage is desperately trying to keep everything powered here. So now if I were to come back here and I'll flip everybody back on, you can see if I go back to my generator that everything is now working back normally. 
So again, one of the interesting things about these systems is the way that they separate those. Now you're probably sitting here going, well, what if you're an aircraft with four engines? <sighs> that gets very, very complicated. And depending on the aircraft, you're gonna have a different type of system. Notice by the way, my um, autopilot kicked off and everything clipped off and my flight directors clipped off and everything popped off just to give you an idea of how devastating that can be. But the fact that we still have it. Now, a lot of you will probably observe, uh, don't these aircraft have a backup generator? Uh, yes, uh, it's, uh, they have what they call an auxiliary power unit. Now, what the APU does is it's basically here for the purposes of giving us a little electrical power as well as compressed air, either in the emergency that we lose something during flight or if we're in a situation where the aircraft is parked and we just need a little bit of electrical power to kind of keep us going happy, sort of a thing like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire up that little APU. Uh, one of the nice things, oh, we don't get that display here. Let me go check that real quick while I'm looking at that. Uh, waypoint status, 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 waypoint status, engine, 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 engine. <laughs> I just love how it does that kind of a thing. And then you got your system and you can see our hydraulics. I love how simple this airplane is compared to like a 747 or something. Notice, by the way, we're getting all sorts of angry error messages on our flight management system as uh, we're basically doing it. APU's up. So uh, what we're going to do now is we're actually going to switch the aircraft over to the APU. Notice at this point, uh, we're just kind of waiting for everything to kind of cycle. Oh, my fast and safety belt light was, oh, was on, ah, whatever, kind of a thing like that. So we're going to get a little notification here that's going to tell us the fact that our APU is at a good speed. But notice what it does here, and notice that our APU little lines here clearly is designed to feed both of these. So now if I wanted to, I could come here and I could pop this one on, I could pop this one on, and now the APU is carrying the entire load of this aircraft right now. For actually to float up here real quick. You'll notice generator two, no amperage. You'll notice generator one, zero. But look at this. Our APU is pulling 58 amps right now. So this thing is working really, really, really hard in order to keep the rest of our electronics uh, kind of basically cooling off here. Now, of course, if I were an evil person, I could come over here and I'll flip that on. You're not really supposed to do that. That's a dual beat situation and it creates all sorts of interesting problems here. But um, what would happen, of course, is our APU is now gonna work even harder. And if you look at its gas temperature, you can see as that load came in, how it's running quite a bit hotter than it was before. So as you can see, there's a lot of different things that you'll see with electrical systems. Now there is an extreme here, however, and that's when you move to the AN-225. So not only do we have the challenge here, where we have more than one engine, but we have six engines. <laughs> and not only do we have six engines, but the electrical system on this aircraft is downright intimidating. But it uses the exact same philosophy as everything we have seen so far. You'll notice, for example, here that we have all of our transformer rectifiers. And notice we have a 36 volt bus here, the three battery bus, essentially. Notice that we have the exact same techniques here as far as uh, picking what different system we'd like to use. Notice that we have the exact same style here, the AZR. It's just saying that's basically off this piece. And of course, you have VSY and then we have this one. You have all your engine generators, but notice to save the frustration, they actually designed it. So the engine, there's only four generators, even though we have six engines in an effort to basically try to break everything down to make it a little bit simpler. And what you actually have, which is really fascinating, is on this aircraft, we have what they call a three phase system, which increases the complexity a little bit, but makes it a little bit easier. Also notice we have two separate APUs on board, which makes this one even more complicated to actually operate. And the other thing I find very, very interesting is that uh, you can see here with our battery or DC system here, that we actually have separate meters for our rectifiers, which remember that's converting AC into DC, and our battery units themselves. Now notice we have five batteries on board and they all are monitored completely independent of each other. And we have a battery heating system over here as well for the purposes of keeping the batteries the correct temperature or like, you know, for at high altitudes or we're in the middle of, you know, Siberia or something along those lines. So hopefully this video has uh, interested you a little bit in how the electrical systems on these aircraft work. The important thing to remember is uh, there are limits. You know, you can only run so much off of an electrical system before something bad happens. Those limits are usually not something you ever have to worry about until you lose an engine, and then things get very interesting. Enjoy.